Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my State of the Commonwealth Address. Tonight we're doing a Facebook Live. Um, it's my goal to update you every Monday night at 7.30 as to the State of the Commonwealth and also give you a brief campaign update. We're going to start with the biggest news item, which I know many of you all have been asking a lot on Facebook, and what happened this weekend on Saturday? And the answer to that is this. The Republican Party of Virginia has a governing board. They control all of the guidelines and rules for the Republican Party of Virginia. This weekend, State Central Committee met via Zoom and they determined that in order for candidates who run for statewide office, for order them to be considered a Republican nominee, the method that was chosen was something called a convention. Now, what is a convention? A co an assembled convention is a convention in which uh, many of us all over the state gather together in one location and we choose our nominee to, to represent us on the Republican side against the Democratic Party and any independents that are running. So what is the difference? The difference is this, in my opinion. We have to select a nominating method that includes the majority of the people because we are about we the people right conventions disenfranchise virginians who aren't able to spend a lot of money and time participating in an all-day republican convention i've been participating in this process for over a decade conventions and primaries and this is why I said back in February, on President's Day, February 17th, I will seek the Republican nomination in a primary. Now, why did I say that? Because primaries allow we the people to conveniently and efficiently vote and, and determine who our Republican nominee is. Conventions don't do that. Conventions enable the Republican establishment elite to participate in the process. Conventions require you to typically be gone all day long. You have to pay for food and lodging. You're gonna spend the entire day at a, probably some place like the Greater Richmond Convention, Convention Center. Uh, we know uh, it's gonna be more likely that the governor can influence our convention because of COVID, right? That's what happened last time and we had to delay the 7th District Convention. This is why I said from the beginning, I support primaries. If, the, if Virginia wants to elect a Republican governor ever again, it is my opinion that we need to go to the primary method. Primary nominations give us the most qualified candidate, one that has to test their grassroots organization and immobilize across the entire state of Virginia. It's a test. It's a test to see if you can raise money and you can mobilize the grassroots. I think primaries are more inclusive. They allow our military members to participate in them. They, were, they allow people who have young children to participate because if you go with the convention method, which was chosen, it's going to require families to get a babysitter because they can't um, they're going to have to have their kids with them all day. And, and that, of course, is a very challenging situation because in conventions, you typically have multiple rounds of voting, which requires people to stay longer and longer for every single round of voting. We saw this in the 7th Congressional District whenever the process lasted probably about 10 hours. And uh, because of COVID, everyone was forced to stand outside in a 104 degree temperature. You know, how if, if people are signing up to be convention delegates, they also have to pay to play. They have to pay a fee that, that um, allows them to vote. And um, we've already talked about some of the other expenses, but it's, it's basically, in my opinion, pay to play, which you all know how I feel about pay to play. Um, I feel like it, disenfranchises people that are not able to pay. And, and it sh there should not be any type of poll tax 
um, on, on Republicans who want to vote. I don't see it as any different than that. So I took a hard stand. Listen, I'm still a Republican. I'm still a Republican state senator serving as a Republican. I'm not denouncing our values. I'm not denouncing our creed. I am a Republican. If you take a look at my scores, they're impeccable. I still have a 100% rating with the VCDL, an A rating with NRA, 100% rating with the Family Foundation. Um, you, you won't find a, a record that's any better than mine, to be honest with you. So my record hasn't changed, but a lot of people say, well, how do you, how do you plan on winning as an independent? Because an independent hasn't won the governor's race since the 1800s. Well, here's what I would tell you. I want to seek the Republican nomination in a primary. And I implore you to reach out to members of the State Central Committee and lobby them. Lobby Rich Anderson, who is the chairman of the Republican Party of Virginia, and encourage them to meet again and vote again on this very critical nomination process in which we as Virginians need to have, we as Republicans need to include more people, not less, in this process to ensure we get the best candidate. That's the bottom line. There has been enough of an outcry uh, from unit chairs, from regular, regular people on the street who said, why are we choosing a convention? Um, a number of people across the state, um, people who've run for office this year have said, we want a primary. Those, in fact, most of the candidates running this year have said they would prefer a primary. So um, I just encourage, I think there are a lot of good people that sit on the state um, central committee, and I think many of them, conservatives even, who are like me, who believe that conventions are the best way to get a conservative candidate. Um, I've seen too many shenanigans since I've been in the Republican Party. Um, look at what happened with Bob Marshall when he and, and uh, Jim Gilmore faced off. What happened at that convention? We saw slating. We saw longtime members of the Republican Party being slated or saying that they could no longer be a delegate to the convention and participate and vote. And that is unfortunate. We should not be in a situation where we are slating delegates and saying that they cannot vote. If they're registered to vote and registered voters, they should be eligible to vote. Now, some of you can say, well, we want to make sure Democrats don't participate in our process. The answer is this, do you not think that they can fill out the paperwork and become a delegate? I've seen that happen. I've seen delegates who are Democrats who are at our convention. All you have to do is fill out the paperwork, submit your check to become a delegate, and you're in. So um, nobody goes in and checks to see if you're a Republican or a Democrat. So. Um, I would, def I would say that I could argue with anyone um, against that theory. So let's do what the, the best thing to do and the right thing to do. We, no one wants to split the vote and allow the Democrats to win. We want a Republican governor. But the only way that we're going to do that is unify and work together and not work against each other. Let's work for our candidates. Let's not work against them. Um, I'm going to call out Senator Bryce Reeves, Chief of Staff right now, who has actually created a PAC against me. Um, and he is supposedly a Republican. You know, that's unfortunate. And in fact, he should actually be um, relieved from being a member in the Republican Party. And um, I think that's unfortunate. But that's what you have in the Republican Party. It's time to clean up the Republican Party, and I'm serious enough about this issue that I would actually run as an independent and win. Um, I have the grassroots support across Virginia to win, um, and, and I'll do it. <laughs> they underestimated me the first time that I ran for state senate against a 27-year incumbent. I was told I would never win. And when a second candidate entered the race, they said, oh, y'all are gonna split the vote. The incumbent is gonna get reelected. Friends, I won. 
I had the least amount of money, the least amount of endorsements, and I won. With 40% of the, the vote in a three-way race. And that was in a primary, and I'm a conservative candidate. Conservatives can win in primaries. And we owe that to the people of Virginia and many grassroots Republicans. This is the only way they will be able to participate in this process to select our Republican nominee. So I implore you, reach out to the members of the State Central Committee and ask them, and I'm asking Rich Anderson, who is our Virginia Republican Party Chair, to vote again on this issue. The people have spoken, and Tim Anderson, I know he's done a survey that included hundreds of people on how they stood on the issue. The fact is the majority of Republicans desire to choose their candidate in a primary. So that's the big news this weekend. Um, I know I received a number of phone calls and um, if you would like to tune in here every Monday, we'll give you the latest information. Um, the other thing I would tell you is um, a couple things. We have a huge fundraising deadline that is coming up on December the 31st. Please donate. Donate online. You can go to my website at chase4va.com. Go there and donate online. We have our store online where you can purchase signs. You can get campaign collateral there and support our campaign for governor. Friends, if we're going to put an end to the pay-to-play system, we're going to have to do something different. And the only way we're going to do that is take out the good old boy network that continues to rig the system, typically through conventions, because a lot of people don't realize that in conventions, it is the political consultants and the Republican Party elite who are writing these rules for the conventions and create everything from the form that you have to fill out, the amount the filing fee is gonna be so you can pay to play, to the location of where the convention will actually take place. Let's say that you live in uh, Virginia Beach and uh, they decide to have the convention in Roanoke. You're gonna have to drive all the way to Roanoke to participate in the Republican Party convention. You're gonna probably have to spend the night because you'll have to get there early and you probably won't leave until really late at night. You'll have to find childcare for your kids if you have young school age kids and you'll have to pay to eat out. <laughs> it gets expensive friends. We need to lessen the burdens for folks that want to vote and participate in our Republican primaries so that we can all get behind our Republican nominee. Thanks everyone for tuning in this evening. God bless you. And um, remember that during session, we cannot take donation. So January, February, you will not be able to donate to my campaign. You will not be able to purchase um, items online. So I encourage you, go online right now. Show your support for my campaign. Show your support this evening and, and let me know that you want me to continue because I'm going to fully run as I promised. I will never drop out no matter what happens. I will fully, I will get all the signatures that are required. There are 10,000 signatures required that I'm going to have to get from across the state of Virginia, 400 from every single congressional district. We have people signing up by the droves already. We already have a, a great grassroots team in place that is ready and committed to collect those signatures, we're going to make it happen. But my first preference would be to run as a Republican, as I stated from the beginning, in a primary. But if not, I will continue to run as an independent. And will, and will the votes be split? Yes, they will. Who gets the ire for that? The Republican Party of Virginia State Central Committee, who knew Back on February the 17th, when I announced that I was going to run for governor, they learned two things. One, that I would fully run. The second thing that they learned is that I would run only 
in a Republican primary. So if the state central committee chooses a convention, they're splitting the votes, not me. God bless you, everyone. Have a good evening and take care. Good night.